What is happening guys, Cowboy here, and today I have some folks from AC Legacy joining me. We have Cleric and Chang. Uh, when we were out at the event, we had a chance to sit down with both the director and the producer on Armored Core 6. I had a chance to interview them, ask a bunch of questions. Uh, we were in the room together, so I think we got some, some pretty good questions. Obviously, these guys have been in the AC community for way longer than I have, at the very least, um, but, but they've been around for, for a really long time. Um, and I know you guys have had a lot of mechanic specific questions, so I asked a bunch of those and I think we got we got some juicy content to bring you today as we go through the interview. Yep. Sounds good. So do you guys wanna wanna intro yourselves a little bit? Just kinda talk about, you know, your history with the franchise, what 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 you know brought you together, I guess. Yeah, I think I can start, Cleric. So I'm from Cheng. Um I started Armored Core Legacy. I actually joined the community right about 2010. Uh, first game I played was actually Armored Core 4, and that sort of just started my interest. So uh, started working on the Armored Core wiki, then started looking at the forums, um, was with Armored Core Online for a while before I started to do Armored Core Legacy, uh, sort of with Cleric, Tearson, and uh, Zealous. So we've been doing it for quite a while now. I think we're probably uh, one of the few remaining armored core sort of groups slash sites that sort of exist nowadays uh, but yeah yeah uh i go by cleric uh been around the scene probably the online scene since ac2 i've been playing the game since the demo disc uh you had the option for the pizza hut you know pizza hut demo disc or the playstation underground i've had the game since then love the series ever since played all the way through it uh got involved with the forums with armored core online um, was a mod there for a while, then an admin, and then was kind of running things for quite a long time, all through the 4 era, and then just kind of done a few random retrospectives that were literally 10 years apart, and some people were like, dude, it's been 10 years later, what happened to you? There's some people who thought I was dead, and I wasn't. I just, I have wife, three kids, two jobs, you know, life, life tends to suck that out of you, yeah. you know? But not that I don't, I love all those things, but that's why they took precedence, which is why I took an absence from Armored Core. But uh, no, love the series since the beginning. And the abstinence is over. It's It's been it, yes. it, just just under 10 years, because we have what, 20, I think it was Octo <laughs> October 2013 was Verdict Day, right? September. Was it September? Yep. yep. So yeah, yep. we were still just a pinch, a pinch under 10 years. <sighs> it's been yeah, a long, it's a long time. It it's has, long. it has, and I'm assuming y'all, did y'all see the, the story trailer they just dropped? Oh. Yes. This thing is, it's so visceral. Watch it, that, 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 man, when, when the 1AC is running up on the treads and he, like, shoves the Gatling into, like, the, like, oh, the yeah. gears just trying to blow yeah. it out. Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> it's like, yeah. And, and at the very end, too, is just like, right, the objectives have changed. He just rushes in, does the assault armor, like, point blank. Like, yeah. Dude, this is. Yeah, just completely, this. yeah, it's, it's unreal. So, um. So obviously we had a chance to go through quite quite a few questions in the interview. I'd say we were probably there for about 30 minutes or so. Um, and I think the the first question, Chang, that was actually from you, was the the, the weapon in the melee question, right? Yep. Uh, so let me see if I have here. So the question I had was, uh, in the most recent previous entry, so 4-4 four, four answer, 5 verdict day, a player could create a build that uses melee weapons but no projectile weapons. In Armored Core 6, its role has shifted to be more similar to older games where it supplements projectile weapons without necessarily overshadowing them. What was the thought process for changing the role of melee in Armored Core 6? Got it. Yep. I wrote down mine. I'll just let you, let, <laughs> I'll let yeah. you take your answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah. Um, so this one was answered by Yamamura. And basically, the point that they were trying to make was that melee was meant to be more supplemental since Armored Core, at its core, is more of a shooting game. So the goal of uh, having a more limited melee was to make uh, to make it more unique for each weapon and unique to one side. Yeah. So it was meant to, you know, I think part of the combo system, the stagger and all that's meant to work together to make it feel like whatever combination you decide to use, it's, you know, your combination. Yeah, I thought it was interesting that they're they're locking it to the left hand too. Because from what I saw, yeah. were, were the shields the the um, the temp shield you can deploy? Wasn't that left shoulder slot or was that right shoulder? Yeah, slot? left shoulder. Yeah, so yeah, you can't. Um, I mean, at least based on what we played, it looks like we were we're not going to be able to have like you know 
sword and shield obviously going in um but yeah i'm curious to see how many people rely are gonna like you know try to keep like melee options keep the sword and the shield and then go yeah. for like you know maybe missiles and a blaster or something like that um but yeah no no just swapping sword and shield mech man running around so you know yeah. it's, it's sort of funny too there was um one thing that came up and i only saw this because i was watching uh, i think aggie screen uh but you can if you don't have a weapon in the right hand side you can just you can punch, punch yeah yes yeah he was so telling me he was going yeah, around punching stuff new. yeah so that's, you that's technically that was yeah, not so, there before which means technically you can still do full, a full melee build but obviously it yeah. doesn't work quite as well, well i could see you oh, know like you're, yeah you're completely out of ammo instead of just knocking your arm off at least you're you're you know tossing the weapon and then and then yeah. punching presumably i'm assuming that's how discharge works now unless we just pop the arm off um, and then uh, I know we can, with the uh, the new upgrade system, we're able to to put an alternative weapon. So I'm curious yep. to see how far that gets if we, you know, because I'd love to have like a quick laser sword. And then when the stagger goes, out comes the pile driver. You know, I, oh, think, yeah. I think Yamamura did mention that you're able, once you do have the full tune, that you're able to swap it with another melee weapon, melee weapon? I think. But I'm not 100% yeah, sure because, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, because I was I was playing like as we were wrapping up testing, I did a little bit with the pile driver, and it was like fifty five percent of something's health on staggered. I was beating up the um the 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 rookie mission. That mm -hmm. poor thing is just going to be a test dummy. It's like an easy easy yeah. thirty thousand credits every time you kill it. And I'm like, every time you get it, it's like, yeah. oh, this takes two minutes. I'll yeah. take the money. You're a punching bag. Um, well, what's interesting about that too is like in previous games, blades were relegated mostly to the left. You had blade arms, other things that featured, yeah. but. You had with four, you had some changes, but there was classically pile bunkers and parry blades were right arm weapons, and you could still have regular blades on the left. Now in the demo, you had pile bunkers on the left one, yeah. Which, like you said, you're messing with. So I'll be curious to see if there's any more as you unlock more parts. If there's maybe more customizations down the road. I didn't get a chance to to test it fully, but when I was talking with Oro, he mentioned that if you instead of doing like the charging with it, if you stood still, it actually changed the animation, like it did like an uppercut correct that could yes. do even more damage so yeah if you're charging in it's like a la one punch man and if you stand still and do it it's like or you can it's a little nuts yeah and the damage i mean i, I can already see like builds that are focused <laughs> on st staggering the pile bunker is going to be a very very deadly thing to contend with for sure um, so i think this this next question um there's been a lot of discussions surrounding this like the checkpoints obviously there's there's healing now and so uh, this question was related to punishment, and it was, you know, how does this punishment now work on death? Is it similar to the previous game? Uh, how does healing factor into that, and how does accessing either AC data or assembly from a checkpoint factor into that? And what, what they basically said was that it is, there's basically checkpoints. For each checkpoint, we have uh, a different threshold. So per checkpoint is how it's now graded now and that it's focused on you just dying at that checkpoint or how much healing you take at the checkpoint. So while you're not punished necessarily for using your heal, if you use the heal because you lost that much health, the idea is, you know, it's not that you use three heals that you're being punished, it's because you've healed 200,000 damage worth of health. So that factors into your punishment, but once you die, that's it, it's just a death. So once you die, if you do your AC data, if you go into assembly and completely change your build out, there's no like extra punishment tallied on top of that. It's still just counting as like a death penalty, which, what are your thoughts on there? Um, I'll start. Honestly, the, I, people I know were concerned about the healing thing when it came out. And I will be, admit I was a little <clears throat> bit concerned myself because that's a brand new thing to the series. But they honestly could have just tripled everyone's HP and it would have felt the same in my Exactly. Opinion. The game is so punishing. Like, I mean, Armor Core has always been a fairly punishing game, but this game feels even more so. Like, you used to ignore the little MTs. You could just ignore them and move on, and just it didn't matter. These things, almost anything on the ground can do so, enough AP damage to you that you have to pay attention even to the little guys. Yeah. So they, they could have just tripled the HP and not had healing, and it wouldn't have made a difference. So I, I think it gives you another strategic element, which I always kind of appreciate. It also gives a difficulty element for those who are like, I want to do healless runs or something or some craziness, which good luck to those people. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I know we, we've talked a bit before about how there's a bit of a disdain with how Armored Core's got a lot of direct 
they've been making a lot of direct comparisons with Dark Souls. But I feel like this is one thing where they're trying to, as they've sort of said before, learn from the previous uh, experiences of their the other games that they worked on. Uh, so, you know, one thing that Cleric sort of brought up there is that there is a certain level of challenge versus having, you know, just triple the, the a AP, not only in terms of, you know, having to do the heal at specific points, but also think about how when you have to fight with enemies, you have some enemies that have a near one hit KO potential. So yeah. if you build out the wrong AC, you could just get utterly wiped during a mission. So now there is sort of an importance to how you build and also just being very careful. Uh, and I think, Cleric, one thing that we saw a lot, especially during the fifth gen, is that when people are unfamiliar with the game mechanics, a lot of times they'll just rush in. And sometimes you can just tank the hits and be okay with it. But I think this game and sort of the concept they're going with, they do want you to, you know, feel a little hot under the collar whenever you're out there trying to fight enemies. You know, basically everything is out there a threat, and if you overstep, you could just die. Yeah, and that's I think that's that's the big thing. I remember um, when we were having dinner, we were talking about how it's like, oh, you know, it's basically like instead of 50,000 and then three heals, it's like you have 200,000 health, but... It's not the same urgency. Because if you just have yep. 200,000 health, you're like, oh man, that thing took off a quarter of my health. But, you know, whatever. You still got 150 left. If something hits you and it's like 10,000 AP, you're like, I'm, I'm about to die. Like, so it definitely, <laughs> it, 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 it completely changes kind of your... And those things exist. Yeah, yeah. They, they are in the demo. Dude, yeah, straight the, up uh, die. Yeah, some of, the, <laughs> some of the, the boss abilities were just like... There was there was one with the... Um, I don't want to talk too much final boss, but... Um, the fire attack first time that hit me my health oh, just it yeah, just vanished yeah. i was like did what, what health what i was like this thing was about to die what, what even just happened i'd like go Armor back points. and watch it after the point dude i just I just vanished yeah. i vanished there's also for that for that same boss so it has a bazooka but usually what it does is that it hides it between the missile strikes so if you're if you pay too much attention dodging the missiles you get hit by the bazooka and then you're staggered and then it can it leaves you open yeah. So there's a lot of different ways it can tear you down. I would say that was a really fun fight, though. Every time it charged up its it assault was. armor, I was like, yeah. oh, you have assault armor? I have assault armor! <laughs> Just like, <laughs> countering it out. That was that was a blast. Um, so we had... Moving on, though, our next question. Um, you can go, ahead, go ahead one more time, Jing. What was that? Oh, yeah. You, well, I figured we'll just alternate, because I know we, we could tell what oh, kind of okay, did with the interview. Fine. So, um, I was asking... Um, about DLC as far as like you know expansion packs and regulations. So, uh, historically, from software has chosen released DLCs, expansion packs, which add specifically to the original game. Armor Core Five and Verdicte took the opposite approach with many small separate DLC packs that were not essential add-ons. Uh, how will Armor Core Six approach DLC implementation? And essentially, the answer was no DLC is planned at the moment. We're focused on the initial game. Uh, but we were able to eke out a little bit of information out of that. There was a follow-up question, which was a la like uh, regulations or patches so to speak for balance tuning the parts so they would be paying attention to player feedback they'll look at some metrics and see if something be tuned up tuned down uh so it's not going to be completely static what you see is what you get they will be paying attention to the gameplay and see if some stuff needs to move so uh they kind of made a big point to show they're looking to the focus on the release and have the success of the release yeah so i would say if you want dlc support the game yeah, support the game <laughs> i think that's the big thing is you know just 10 10 years i think they're and like we're starting to see marketing ramp up now but i do think they're being they're 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 stepping carefully you know because they don't want to overdo it and then have it flop and they don't want to underdo it and then they don't hit sales so it's a i don't want to say precarious position but it's they're definitely treading very carefully with with how they approach this launch and support it, it feels like yep definitely um, moving on from there, this was obviously been a big, big point of contention in the community, the hard lock, and in particular, how the hard lock works in PvP. Um, so, confirm the hard lock does function as a hard lock in PvP. You can curve around people with it. Um, but I think in general, so before we even go into, into the question, I think a big thing to discuss is just kind of how the hard lock functions, because playing at least, yeah. it's... I think the biggest thing I notice is it changes your movement as opposed to you, you know, moving on an X, Y axis. Now it's like you're moving around your target as you go. So it tries to keep your target like centered on you. 
and and you know it's like almost like if your target is a pin you're a string that's going around that pin so it yeah and I, no go, go ahead go ahead i think Claire cleric sort of brought this up best when we were sort of playing through it it went armored core's movement has gone from being strafe based to basically being turn based so yeah. because before we're used to if you're moving the left stick you go you know left right forward or back and then the right stick is where you actually turn and move and now it's a little bit more flexible where your movement or your turning is going to be that full left stick and then your right stick is the is the full camera control yeah. and i the way i like to think of it is like it's almost like a hybrid of the old fcs system and also armored core 4's lock on because you still have some level of manual control um but it's not the full control of the fcs um yeah yeah that's kind of when i was at least doing missions i found that i was using just a regular lock for going through the mission and then when there was an actual another you know target i was fighting like something that was beefy enough that's when i was implementing the hard lock because i was able to more yeah. focus on dodging and mechanics and whatnot uh, whereas there were times, I mean, like trying to fight the, the, the tank boss, trying to fight that thing without the hard lock, you're just like, where did you come back? Like, yeah. <laughs> blasts past you so fast. <laughs> um, well, interesting too, with the movement on the lock is if, if you're just locked on someone and you move, you do turn and do things. Yeah. You stay focused. Whereas if you're actively firing, you go back into that old strafing motion where you basically move sideways while you fire. Yeah. So there actually is some slight alterations based on what you're currently doing. Yeah. And it felt, it felt good. Um, but to go into the answer, yeah, the hard lock does it does work in PvP. It is a hard lock. However, doing the not hard lock, just the regular lock on, you're gonna end up having better accuracy with that traditional firing style. Um, they said that it will spin your AC, but that it can be uh, since the lock is based on distance, it can be broken. So, you know, in the example of you being a tank tread that's running double Gatling cannons and something small. I mean, it's going to be a game of cat and mouse, but it should be very easy for a small reverse joint to basically just poke you from range and stay away to the point where your lock on is not going to keep you on the target. Yep. Yeah, it's not absolute, which I think is the right way to go. Um, then the, the biggest thing, because I was that was a big point for me is like, well, how does this, you know, how, what's to stop? Because I even brought up that, that, you know, that tank thing again. I was like, what's to stop my tank yep. from just killing? And then they mentioned that uh, certain weapons are going to have a restricted range of motion. So I can't just be this, you know, omniscient 360 bazooka tank just following everything. Uh, and that in a lot of cases, mobility is going to be able to outplay that lock simply because even if you're locked on, your weapons aren't going to necessarily be able to keep up. Yeah, yep. your, your AC is not going to be able to pull a Kermit while it's trying to fire at something flying above your head. Yeah. So. And then the other thing, too, uh, um, is that when it comes to your weapons, the projectile speed has been changed in game. So on average, most of them are a lot slower. Like the oh, bazooka, yeah. it's sort of hilarious because you can fire the bazooka and then fire missiles shortly after that. And 99% of the time, the missiles will hit before that bazooka does. Towards the end, I was actually, I was running a uh, bazooka grenade launcher combo. Mm -hmm. And I'd <laughs> wait till something would pause, bazooka it to stagger it and then hit the grenade launcher. Because otherwise, like you would... Trying to manually hit something with that grenade launcher, just unless it was like dead in the water, it wasn't going to happen. Right. Like stuff just moves so fast. But um, so moving on, next question. AC Legacy. That one was, was I think, the multiplayer. So, and I, and I think this was probably the question that's been on most people's minds. You know, what are From Software's plan for multiplayer? Will we see extensive game modes like V and Verdict Day? Will there be any cross play? So for those who've been wondering, they have confirmed there will be 1v1 and 3v3s, um, but there doesn't seem to be any other game modes, anything like Five or Verdict Day or anything beyond that. They were very clear that Armored Core 6 was really meant to be a single player game. Um, when it comes to crossplay, unfortunately, there isn't any. Uh, they did say that you can still play within the same family of games, so um, consoles, sorry. Um, so if you're PS4, PS5, but there isn't any cross-play. Where are you guys planning on playing? I'm going to be honest, I, I sort of want to do the 1v1, just because we've done teams for so long. For oh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm in, like, pl platform. Have you, have you chosen oh, platform. Yet? Gotcha. Yeah. Um, PC. Same. Yeah, PC, hands down. Mods it, and it, Steam it Deck? Like Steam Deck? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah, hello? Exactly. Just going to be sitting in bed, like, doo, 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 just tweaking for hours. No. 
to not get too off topic, I was curious because you mentioned Steam Deck, right? So, like, we obviously use controllers in the demo. Yeah. Um, I was I was a little bit sad I couldn't hook up a mouse and keyboard and try it out. And see Dude, it I don't even want it. It must be cracked. Like, I, I I don't I don't know what that would be like. I don't yeah. know. I, I am very curious, but yeah, no. Um, PC for sure, like you said, mods. Who knows what we're going to come up with? Um, oh, there's going to be Gundam mods within like a week, guaranteed. Oh, well, yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, and then on the multiplayer one, we did uh, we did touch on this, but obviously full emblem creation is back in, and along with that, reporting for emblems. So any edgy kids in game reporting and in form reporting. So we have full reign of emblem creativity, how we have had in the previous games. And there is uh, you know, just anti-toxicity measures in place, which is good to see. Yep. Um, so moving on from there, I brought up the note of, of tuning. So a big mechanic in in uh, Verdict Day is how we could tune our weapons specifically towards, you know, maybe a little more reload, maybe a little more damage, maybe a little more accuracy, whatever the case is. And there's something new called OS tuning, and so. This is really interesting. Um, I'm gonna have some of this in the actual, the, the big footage video. So we're tweaking our AC in general versus the individual parts. And what I thought really cool here is how there's like general unlocks so stuff like the instant U-turn, being able to have, you know, extra weapons on your back versus shoulder weapons. Those are just flat unlocks, but then there's also more, I guess we could just call them passive bonuses that you can unlock in that tree and you acquire these points from playing through the arena missions. So you can't unlock everything, but there is a fair amount of unlockability and customization. So everyone's gonna be able to kind of have their own just personal tuning for their mech itself versus like, oh, well, these are my firepower Kurosawas and here are my fast recharge Kurosawas or whatever the case is. There's also some interesting I don't know if you saw this, but there were some interesting too. And so for example, there was one for manual aim. Yeah, yeah, just pure manual aim. Yeah, I'm curious. That's that sounds that has PC written all over it. <laughs> for, oh yeah, abandon your lock on for pure manual aim. Sure, let's go. Uh, but some of those, I mean, at least in the with with what I with the amount that we were able to unlock during our play session, I went for where did I go? I did assault. I think I did two double upgrades into assault armor. I did the the uh, boost kick or chicken kick, whatever you want to call it. The assault boost. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there was one more I did. I think I added the quick turn in just to have it. So that that is a yeah. A lot of that stuff. A lot of the, the really cool stuff we're actually seeing in the trailers. You know, stuff like assault armor, stuff like the the you know the kicks and all that. That's actually unlockables. And what's nice, at least, is they they, they came really fast. I felt like even though we we played the first chapter, I feel like they they paced it really well. They weren't like gating content until late. Like by the end of the first chapter, it was like, oh, I got customization. I got all four of my light tops. I got a, a very good variety in the shop. I feel like, you know, this is a, 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 you know, fully formed armored core game by the end of the first chapter. You're not like, where's X, Y, Z? Like it's there. Oh yeah. You have, you had Definitely. a lot of options by the time you ended up with the first chapter between the parts that were available in the shop, what you got for completing arena missions or, or even like doing, they incentivized even doing the training, which I think is smart. Because yeah. I tried to introduce this to a whole new, you know, generation of gamers who may not be yep. familiar with the series. You know, incentivizing doing the training by giving you parts is an awesome idea because it doesn't like, oh, it's just training. Because, you know, we play other games and like, oh, training mode's kind of, uh, I'm tired of this. But actually, it's good to incentivize it because there's a couple of things that obviously were new to the game, this particular game. And there's some things like, oh, I didn't know about that. And so it, it was interesting to see how it explained it. And it was not a million words of text. It was pretty straightforward. You got to, a brass tax explanation you got to go in and do it so yeah it's yeah I, I by the time the first chapter was over i felt like i had a proper grasp on what is capable of customizing and that's just what we had i, I yeah. guarantee there's probably gonna be a lot more oh yeah yeah there's gonna be there's there's gonna, there's gonna be plenty that's for sure i think i actually i really enjoyed the training especially like how they you know you had had your, your basically bipedal training then you had your reverse joint training you had your tetrapod training you had your tank training um, I thought it was a really, really nice way to kind of just ease you into a new play style, like especially the Tetrapod. That's that's honestly my my favorite change because I've always felt like their identity was kind of hazy, and now it's like you're the hover gunboat. Like you just you just literally now you float in the air and you just rain death down. And I'm like, this is this is good. You have a very clear identity now, and I'm I don't know. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm a tank guy at heart, but I'm kind of like floating above, raining fire is pretty fun. 
Yep. Tank drifting was interesting too. Oh yeah, that's that was. <sighs> Egg felt real good. Tank, tank felt yeah, real good. It did. It did. I, I think that's the only game where you can turn, like the whole top part, a full three sixty. Dude, yeah, liter just, literally, like, literally, it's you're just you're you're just sitting there like. Mm. <laughs> just, yep. just cruising and blasting stuff. It's so much fun. Yep. Oh man. Um. So after tuning, I know what was y'all had another one. Yeah. So I wanted them to give a little bit more insight um, on the particular mechanic they chose. So the full question was: Armored Core has seen many shifts in gameplay design and mechanics, like heat in Armored Core Two, and up until Last Raven. What made the team choose the stagger concept as a major cornerstone of Armored Core 6's game design? And um, we've talked about this a little bit at the start, but the common theme here when they're talking about Armored Core 6 is they want to create challenging battles. And specifically, they're talking about making you feel a large range of emotions. So I'm assuming, you know, thinking of like that frustration when you're fighting a boss and you can't beat them. And then just the sheer exhilaration you have after you pass that particular hurdle. Um, so the impact on focus um, is really meant to amplify that. Partly so in sort of the combinations that you choose, because again, uh, personal combinations are a really big point here, but also using the mechanics and also what's available to you to get that victory yeah and the, the stagger that was it was really interesting to play with because at first you know at, at initial impression well early on was like you know most stuff i was like oh, i'm not even getting stagger off this thing's just dying mm -hmm. and then you actually like the first time you get a stagger and you go into like a blade combo or a pile bunk or whatever it is you're like damn bitch like it feels satisfying and on the flip side like oh man the tank boss like I'd like see the stagger window go up and like yeah. fail to get into that slot. That's so frustrating. I was like, this was my biggest opportunity to hurt you and you're gone. You just you just drove off like literally driving away, giving me the fingers. And I'm like, well, fuck, I'm not gonna shoot you again and make this happen. So it's it's uh it's interesting. And when you get staggered, oh man, like dude, you oh, yeah. it's terrifying. <laughs> like you just yeah. just flat like I can't move. I can't yeah. move. And I mean, and, and I think the, the best example that I can think of is like if you're in the air in like five or verdict day and you get hit by like a sniper cannon, you just straight drop like a sack of bricks. You fall out of the air. You're like, what the what, what just happened? That's what it felt like getting staggered. You were just you're bro, bro, you're, you're hitting the ground. You can't get off your your heel for a second. You're like panicking like it is not a fun feeling to get staggered at all. Yeah. Um. So in reference to that question, I think the second part of their answer was the part of the reason they chose the stagger mechanic specifically was they want they wanted an opportunity for the players to feel powerful. Like they yeah. said, you, you're in these. We, we realize it's going to be challenging, but you're also going to be like these people who are piling these awesome, huge, powerful mechs that you're being shredded left and right. So they wanted the opportunity for you to build things and do things that make you feel like you're really making an impact. So the stagger system was designed to give you that. I, I guess you call that 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 jolt. Yeah. Of you know, what you need to be like. Oh yeah, this is awesome. Let's go. And then yeah, exactly. So it it's. I know stagger seems a little bit of flavor of the month for a lot of games for certain things, but honestly, I think in this sense, the way they worked it makes a lot of sense and adds complexity. Like I was, I was thinking about this the other day. I was on the way home. I was thinking the whole way home about Armor Core, of course, because I just got done doing <laughs> like amazingness for a whole day. Um, it, it, it adds a whole new complexity. So you've always had in the multiplayer aspect, especially. So let's a little bit of mission multiplayer. If I, if I can digest a little bit here, yeah, yeah. Um, you've always had the energy versus solid has always been there. Then you had some chances, chances with like you know Kojima particles, you know with four. You've had different things you tuned for. So, but this one you have three. Looks like you had three damage types. There are three types of different defenses you had, uh, but you also had planning for stagger because some weapons apply more stagger some weapons don't some weapons apply almost no stagger and just straight damage so this is an extra layer of where both you as the person looking to do the assaulting do i want to go for more pure damage do i want to go for more stagger opportunities and build my ac that way and you from the defensive side it's like okay what's my stability look like how well am i equipped against stagger am i going to be full stagger so i don't want to get stuck but then 
risk not having as much defense against yeah. certain kind of weapons. Like it's it's going to be a very much a it's going to be a roulette in a lot of cases, even more than it used to be. So there, there'll be a lot of deep decision making simply because stagger exists. Well, and that's what I was yeah. like. Well, so, so when we're, when we're fighting, that's one thing I noticed is I always had I had one weapon that I was like, this is my stagger weapon. When 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 they are staggered, this I pull out, and I was so hesitant to use that in any other circumstance. Even if there was a fresh bar, no stagger on it, I did. I was like, I don't want to pull out my blade because then if I end up staggering them with some lucky shots and it's on cooldown, I'm missing out on all my damage. And it's 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 like yep. you're you're playing mind games with yourself. And one thing I want to point out too, and this is partially the cleric's point: stun and stagger you know, have have shown up in different forms throughout the Armor Core series. So it's a little bit more straightforward in the older games. You know, you get hit, you, you're stuck there for a moment. And then you have during five and verdict day, it's a little bit more fleshed out where you have armor break. Um, and basically, if you get hit with something with enough stagger um, or a, hit with the weapon that has a high enough impact force, it stuns your AC and then it lowers your defenses by 25%, which is huge in that game. So this is something where they've taken sort of lessons that they've learned over time and sort of modified it and crafted in such a way that it makes sense within this new iteration of Armored Core. So it's not just, you know, a random choice that they made. Oh, hey, this seems like a cool mechanic. Let's just stick it in. Yeah. What were your, uh, what were your favorite, your, your go-to post-stagger weapons? Um, I actually did just double bazooka. I just love it. The double sound bazooka? And then the hits. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You should see it. It was crazy watching him go. It was like, ugh. For, yeah, for I almost, oh. I almost beat the last boss. I was like a pixel of health before it killed me. But like, it's it's amazing feeling when when that hits that double hit. You know, I was for a while. I thought it was gonna be grenade launcher because like the bazooka stagger and the grenade launcher was just mm. like delete. But like just before we ended, man, trying the pile bunker and seeing what that did, I'm like, mm, this I I don't know, man. This might be a permanent addition. <laughs> just you live oh. right here, ready to go. Yeah. Well, you get the OS upgrade where you can have more arm parts. You can swap to the arm part and do it when they're staggered. So well, that's that could be an option. that's kind of what I, I'm thinking is have like like the multi hit blade, the one that's like lower on stagger, but just like helps to build it. Just get that swap. Boom. That might be my like my go to, unless I'm a tank boy, in which case it's just bazookas and gatlings, baby. Like <laughs> you're gonna go yeah, down. Yeah, there's one. There's one point where the guy, the boss, just got staggered. So I I assault boosted in, kicked him double blade him and then assault armored like, yeah it was like there's boom 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 the the, the amount like... of uh <laughs> i mean we'll, we'll get to this later but i know uh chang brought up you know various themes of the game and if like there was one word you know one word that they would uh encapsulate this game with and they brought up aggression and uh, dude playing it you feel it like it's it's <sighs> I don't know. It feels it feels more visceral, I think, too, because like four to me, four to me felt very, you know, like turbo mode and and five and VD. They were they were, you know, obviously, they're not, I don't know. Everyone always says they were slow. They weren't that slow. If you knew what you were doing, you were still jetting all no, over the yeah, place. They weren't that, they weren't that um, slow. But, you know, it, it did. I think it felt heavier at times in five. At least right. I was playing tanks and whatnot, you know, the kick and whatnot. But this man, like you said, like you're running in. Like running in, assault armor, hit something, go for the kick, go for the pile bunker. Like you're just comboing yeah. things on top of each other to to capitalize on that stagger bar. And it's like it's a different feeling because it, it's it's a I mean it makes sense, you know, because he, he wasn't he the uh the was he the combat design for Sekiro? Yes. Uh yes, Yamamura was. Yeah, and that's Yamamura you know, was, you can yeah. the the same kind of like aggression that like I don't know if you guys played Sekiro, but like I mean, a whole thing of gods, and I, I told everyone, I was like, you know, the number one thing in this game is aggression. You don't back off. Like, you back off, stagger bars go down, you get your ass beat, and it, it feels similar here. You know, you don't have, like, the parry gameplay. I mean, you do have, like, that, the quick shield, but, you know, it's not it's not like that. This is not mech, no. mech hero or mech souls or anything. Yeah. Mech hero. Um, that's, that's, that's the I funniest like that. name I've heard, but it the, the <laughs> same aggression from Sekiro is very much alive and well here. Like, you're not just, like sitting up top like i'm gonna pea shoot this thing like no you you want to smash yeah and and to sort of go a little bit more in depth there um so the one the one word that they used with aggression and the second word he used uh when he thought about it a little bit more was acceleration and then i recommended burst because basically um and i think cleric you mentioned this too 
when it comes to the gameplay itself, it can be very fast. But overall, the general speed is fairly low. It's only for very short periods of time that you're really moving at that quick speed, you know, that frantic action, sort of so so on and so forth. Uh, but overall, it's, it's again, it's not a slow game, but specifically the combat is designed to be um, periodic, but very quick to it. I think one of the, um, the, uh, the mining ship, it was like the perfect example of it. Because when, you, when you're on that thing, I was like walking, I'm like, hmm, hmm. I'm like looking around, how do I get over here? And then you, and then, okay, hmm, hmm. <laughs> can, I, can I hop up there without being shot by this laser? Like, Or have enough energy to do so? Yeah, yeah. am I going to fall to my death and lose half my health again? Like, yeah, to, get, to kind of go to this point further, uh, like Burst, I think it's a good, good way to describe it, because, okay, so the way I would describe speed and movement in this game is... It, you have elements of third gen and fourth gen and fifth gen. You you, you kind of get you see the the antiquities of those movement systems in all three. Oh yeah. But the way I would describe movement in this game is purposeful. Like you have to be purposeful in when you decide when you're going to move, when you're going to boost, how you're going to boost, where you're going to boost to. Because uh, the energy management in this game is going to be a, a major factor, which I think that's what limits the speed, quote unquote, even though you can go pretty fast if you do what you know what you're doing, but it's only going to last for so long. And then you're going to put yourself in a pretty bad lurch because you bottomed out your energy reserves yeah. because you went a little too much. So I think I think burst and purposeful movement, knowing how to properly gauge that, it's going to be a huge part of the game. I think that when the first time I was assault boosting and I accidentally like glided to the left a little bit my dude was like doo, 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 doo. and then it was like your bar's empty oh, yeah. i was like what yeah. what, what just, where did all my energy go like what i, I just <laughs> left he typed tapped the stick what happened dude, yeah and it, it was it was like a, it was like a third of your energy for one of those assault boost dodges like it is juicy yeah um so the next question this was kind of uh talking about some of the older games but i wanted to know um in this game, given that we have a more mission-based structure and we're going through missions, are there going to be any special weapons or unique weapons that could be found? Uh, and they did confirm that there are going to be special or unique weapons that you can find uh, from certain enemies in missions. There's also going to be equipment boxes out in the world where you could find stuff like this. Um, and they did say that this is primarily a main mission thing. They didn't say it's exclusive to that, but they said, you know, you're going to get a good good feel for the type of mission where you're going to find these things. So it's not going to be like oh. you, you go into a duel and you're like, all right, let me scour the battleground for a, for a loot box first. Like you'll, and to be clear, we're talking equipment boxes, not no, no micro loot box bullshit. Obviously that's not in this game. Um, but that's, that's dope, man. The idea of, of unique weapons returning, just, just, you know, cool things you can find. That's I'm looking forward to that. And it makes I, I sense the mistake. To... Oh, good. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, but it makes sense, too, because it's like the environments are also a lot larger here, too. Um, yeah. I think in the last AMA, I was saying, like, this is, if you took the average size of a five map and one from four answer, that's still not as big as these maps. So there's, you know, a lot more ability to do that exploration, even if it, that isn't necessarily the main point of every mission. Yeah, it's... Yeah, well, go ahead. No, you're good. You sure? Yeah. Yeah, well, say like, go and do it and exploring around, right? Like I, I was just I was making a joke. If you're in that test AC in the training ground. Well, a classic trope for the AC series is there's a hidden part in the tan in the training arena. I didn't even think about looking. No. It never even crossed my mind. Could there could have even been one there? Which is why I was thinking you like, well, it's mostly going to be mission based. I wonder if that was like a little hit. Like maybe you should check the training spot because that was a classic <laughs> hidden spot through the previous games. So. It, it's it's going to be hard because like there's there's a big part of me that's like go 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 but like the missions are so big and i know i'm gonna want to be like okay it's time to just slowly comb this map doing serpentines popping my scan constantly and what have we found here like that's that's gonna be you know because i can't i can't just be passing up goodies i need to find all the goodies and like some like the uh God, what was that mission called the the wall climber one like that's a whole i mean it's a huge city that we're we're going yeah, through like huge. there's so many spots that could be boxes hidden and there's so much shit oh, I gotta kill yeah. on top of that. <laughs> like... yeah. Well, there's that one mission too where you have a certain time limit. Imagine if there's extra up on that mission. Oh like, yeah, the the, the find yeah. find five uh, the intel find, or whatever find the things, whatever. Like, yeah. they're, they're so. I mean, that's almost it's practically a vertical map because you just keep going down over and over again. So it's yeah. like, oh my word, how big is this place? 
which we haven't we haven't talked about missions but um that that i was really happy with that because i think there was like before going hands-on i feel like a lot of people like this looks mission based but, i mean there, there was you know the longer missions there was like the short speedy missions there were the the dual type missions like they definitely got a solid variety here it's not like you're playing a, like obviously there's a campaign but it doesn't feel like you're just going campaign to campaign to campaign and on top of that you know we still have the, the training we have the arena like there's there's definitely some some really good gameplay variety in place, which was really nice to see. Mm, yeah. uh, it, it, people who are, I know are used to the open world thing more now, but honestly, mission based, I think is the way to go for this. Cause I don't know if you're going to want open world with this game, as much damage you're going to be taking. Cause I just think you're going to die left and yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, what I like too, is I'd like to, to have different ACs and, you know, just mix it yeah. up. Like I'm going to be a tank for this one. I'm going to be, you know, touch upon in this one and just, you know, it's that variety. That's one of the big things that appeals to me with Armor Core. Yep. And the idea of like, I don't know, open world Armor Core just sounds kind of tiring. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I got to, where's my next, you know, where's my next garage to refuel my ammo or something like, I don't know. It doesn't make sense. Um, yeah. I know we had. It makes sense. So I only had one more question on my list. I think y'all had two more left, right? Yeah. So do you want to, do you want to go or do you want? Yeah, no, yeah. Take, take, take one of yours. Okay, so the next, this one was a bit of a smaller question. I think maybe you asked this, and that was the question about Unix. Uh, yes, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so, whether, whether there were Unix or any type of NPC assistance or mercenaries, and they said there, there are no Unix this time around. Um, there, and then I, I pestered them about, you know, I know we, we were, we were uh, sold out, but the only... The only thing from a Souls game that should be in this game is invasions and co-op in the form of invading targets or cooperative mercenaries. And they kind of just reiterated what Cleric said, was that DLC is a possibility in the future, but that there's no thoughts at the moment. Yep. I, I want to be the AC that rarely shows up in the middle of the missions that cause problems. I want to be that person <laughs> instead for a change. Troublemaker. Dude, that, that would, that honestly, guy. if like half a year from now they dropped like Armor Core 6 Mercenaries expansion and it's like cooperative and invasion gameplay added with this expansion, I'd be all over it. Are you kidding me? I would replay the campaign oh, yeah. just so amazing. somebody could try to invade me and I could ruin their shit yep. in the mission. Or play with your friends even. Like it just, it would be awesome. Which, I mean, it's going to happen PC. Guarantee somebody's going to figure out a way to do like a, a, a seamless co op AC thing. Anyway, back, so I know, what was the, the last one we had? So the last, I think, big one from, from us was, does From Software currently have any plans for out-of-game functionality and support? Examples are the Armored Core Official Partnership, ACOP, and the ACVD link website for Armored Core Verdict Day. So for those who don't know, um, From Software has a pretty big support, has a lot of support for the JP community. Um, and two of their big things was the Armored Core official partnership. That was basically an all-in-one forum that From Software ran. And then there was also ACVD Link, which accompanied Armored Core Verdict Day. And basically, you could see the status of the war. So basically, who has uh, what regions. It has an online AC builder. And then if you take screenshots in-game, you could also uh, pull those from the website and download them. Um, so basically we're trying to see, okay, with Armored Core 6, are you going to do, um, anything outside the game? And currently it sounds like they currently have no immediate plans and they just talked about some of the in-game features. So for example, the, uh, the emblem swapping that you sort of mentioned earlier. Yeah, design sharing, emblem swapping, yep. all that stuff. So going to have emblem, uh, make your best anime girl contests and see what people come up with, um, there was one one last question which I couldn't help myself from asking, and it was uh, whether they <laughs> the, the the tongue in cheek question. Yeah, yes, whether, whether yeah. they had any uh, choice words for the people that uh, are still insisting that Armored Core is a Souls like, um, and they basically said first and foremost this is this is Armor Core, and they're they're bringing Armor Core into a more modern setting, and they're pulling from their their expertise on past games, but this is this is Armored Core. So and it is. It yeah, is. Oh it no! It felt is. it felt so good. Like, yeah. 
this general we're at yeah. we're already at 45 minutes y'all just want to bullshit for 15 minutes and talk about our experiences <laughs> yeah sure let's do it oh i'm all I, give me an excuse to talk about armored core <laughs> 15 minutes isn't enough it's just not. yeah it was but, i had, oh man I'm, I'm honestly more than anything i'm just so excited we finally like the fact that it's it's come i don't gotta plug my drag my fucking 360 out of the closet and plug that <laughs> into play or or try to emulate it and have some shitty texture pop happening constantly like just the fact that it's 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 coming back and the fact the big thing for me is the fact that it's gonna be on pc i'm so oh, excited yeah. about that because yeah. i mean mod potential steam deck potential mouse and keyboard potential like it's it's like a whole new world being open to armor core yeah. I think the other big thing too is you get to sort of expand who gets to play Armored Core because before, oh, yeah. you know, Armored Core skipped a console completely, and then on top of that, it was only, you know, on the consoles. Period. So being able to be on that new platform that's as big and as wide as that—that's, you know, mind blowing. Yeah. This is I, I not not I love from software. And I've, I've played the game since PS1, so this is not a knock on them whatsoever. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to word it in a way to make I'm not trying to like, disparage them in any way, because I really am not. Uh, but I, I jokingly referred this to as Armor Core with a budget, is the way I kind of jokingly was referring to it before. But, you know, Armor Core was their mainstay for the longest time. Souls, the Souls games, when they got developed and released and became massive hits their company and their stockholder room it grew exponentially their teams grew exponentially the development cycle grew exponentially and that you could kind of see you could see the growing pains a little bit when that first happened but now you can see from is really coming their own entirely at this point and it comes through in this game too like the you were talking about visceral earlier as far yeah. as the gameplay experience how it felt i think a lot to do which i was really glad they gave us headphones the the sound engineering is it's incredible the like, crunchiness of the metal how the terrain sounds the boomingness like the first time i fired that grenade launcher i was like whoa like i feel like <laughs> vibrations in my chest because that's how much that's how much there was like the sound engineering in that game like you feel like you're you're piling around a big bulky heavy multi-ton ex piece of explosive Dude, how, how do you think i felt second. i was i was upstairs on that mean... big screen i was just like <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i mean it's it, yeah, it's it's it, the engine. That was what I took away from as as more like what I wasn't expecting per se. Now I've always liked the sound engineering in the game in general, but I feel like they everything about this game is just turned up a notch. Yeah, which I think is what it needs yeah. to really flourish in the modern era. And you can tell they didn't chintz out. This this game probably had who knows how long of a development cycle, and it shows because the game looks and feels and sounds great. I just love that it's it's you know. I think there were a lot of concerns like with discussion about like the heel and the lock on people like oh you know it's 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 casual core or it's going to be too easy now and like dude, as soon as i got into the workshop and hit like the expand information thermal kinetic chemical you know impact distance stabilization i was like math <laughs> like, it's <laughs> they're not shying away you know ev everything is there everything that you know it, it's it's i don't know it was it was just surreal i was just like this is it this is like this is what, you know, every time I have seen a From Software logo at the Game Awards or a PlayStation showcase for the last 10 years, I've is this is this armor? No, okay, it's not. Is this out? No, no, it's not. And like it's it's finally here. It's here and it's just beautiful. All right, let me before I Chang let you do the same, but let me ask you a question, Cowboy. So where what were you doing or where were you when the were you watching the Game Awards when they announced it? I was. I was I was so, streaming it and I was streaming it and the second that that uh just the red eye showed up I was like it's fucking armor core there's no fucking way it's better be fucking armor core <laughs> and then I dude I was just I was just sitting there I was like a 12 year old kid on Christmas my eyes were lit up I was just like I like I didn't even have words I was just I can't believe this is fucking real like this is it's something I've wanted for so long and it's just it's like I don't know. My 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 birthday is the twenty third. So I saw like once I heard the date, I was like, "This is for me. This is my birthday present." Like, <laughs> thank you from software. Just I will, for you. I will take this. Yeah. I will enjoy this. How about you, Shang? Yeah. So I actually was just watching it on a whim. I had pretty low expectations, but um, 
I don't know, something just felt different watching that, you know, before the full thing played, where you're like, okay, this feels like something, this feels like something, this is something. Um, and it was an absolutely amazing feeling, you know, especially after having waiting so long. It's like, oh, hey, Armored Core is here now. I, I yeah, just... I, uh, I was on a special project at work out of town, and I had gotten back to the hotel room. And I was loading the computer up. I was, like, relaxing for the way. I was like, I'm pretty tired. I'm going to go to bed soon. So I was with Game Awards on. And I'm no joke. Like, I turned the computer on. I load up Game Awards. 30 seconds later, the, the trailer plays. <laughs> That's literally how my experience was. And I'm like, best Game Awards ever. I only see 30 seconds. And this yeah. is already the best there ever was. I'm just like, and my phone just started blowing up. Everyone text messaging and, and DMing me. Like, dude, yeah. Arbor Core. Dude, there's Arbor Core. I'm like, I know. I'm watching it. And it just, yeah, it's, yeah, it was surreal is the best word you used earlier. is described because let's face it. We heard the rumors. We didn't know if they were real or not. Yeah. And yeah. it just, actually seeing it with my own eyeballs, I'm just like, dude, well, yeah, like when this game. When this game comes out, I don't exist. Sorry, guys, I'm gone. Later. Yeah, the, the the trailer had me excited, and then when I got to like see the gameplay, I was like, "This looks good." But going hands on, oh my god! Mm -hmm. Like finally, like playing it and 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 just seeing how it played, how it felt, and it worked. It was so smooth. Like there wasn't there wasn't fucking stutters or frame hiccups or any any. It was just like buttery fucking smooth. It was like a dream. It was just like this is this is amazing. Like honestly, I, the the biggest thing I I don't know I I don't know why they've been like I know the the but well by the time this video goes up I'm sure you know all of the the the, the footage we got will be live, but yeah. like this shit is so fucking tight I don't know why they are being like hesitant with the marketing. I mean the only thing I can guess is maybe there's just you know. Final Fantasy and and Tears, and they didn't want to compete with other other big names, so they were kind of front loading it all for August. But like this, this is easily one of the most polished products I've ever played at a press event because I've gone to press events and and had instances of like, oh, the game crashed for the seventh time, and oh, you're stuck in a wall. We'll fix that. And this was just like like my my biggest problem was that there was too much power being drawn out of an aircraft carrier, so <laughs> I had to go upstairs and play on a bigger screen. I was like, oh, boo-hoo yep. me. Let me sit up here with my big private fan and play on the big screen. Like, it, it was, so this oh. is, I think this is one thing I can provide a little bit of insight to. Because uh, Armored Core Legacy has been working with Bandai Namco and sort of by proxy from software since the 5 and Verdict Day era. Uh, from software is a lot like a cat. They basically do what they want when they want. And whether <laughs> or not it makes sense... Uh, Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Um, so the chances are, I, I know a lot of people are probably guessing, oh, it's they don't think it's the right time. Oh, they think, you know, the gameplay isn't good enough. It could very also very well be that the the the, the, the planets weren't aligned. So that's why I just decided not to talk about it at all. But like they have sort of their own thought process. And, and that's how they've always been. Like even back when they were a very small company, where they make a decision on how they want to do stuff and they stick with it to the end. And it's, you know, done amazing things for their game designs and the games that they've developed. Now, when it comes to publishing and, you know, the PR and all that stuff, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't mean that they're always secretive about it because they were very open with Five and Verdict Day. It's just they have made a decision how they want to do it and no one is going to tell them otherwise. So chances are you're going to get everything the day before release. Yeah, <laughs> basically. It, it hits you with everything. That's, oh man, I can't, I just. I wonder if it, okay, so just, just an open air question. So I we heard from the developers a lot because people were asking questions in different interviews right after the gameplay trailer dropped the Game Awards. And I remember seeing that the social media post, I think is like the one, one of the people helping develop, like they were saying, they were surprised at the the massive response from the West, and I was kind of like, y "You're from software now. Do you do you realize you had Game of the Year in multiple awards at that literally the same Game yeah. Awards you were literally presenting this at? Like, your name is practically printing money when you release games. Like, of course you're having a huge buzz, and you know people in the West like big giant robots that blow stuff up too." 
we, we like it also. It's not just, you know, not just a cultural thing. We also like it. No. And I, I think it's just like they maybe they just weren't expecting this amount of interest potentially. I have no idea. I'm hoping the, the, the sales numbers and the release and the interactions are so off the charts what they were expecting. Like, oh, we got to do more. That, that's, yeah. that's 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 my dream. I'm, my dream is that it blow, blows past all their expectations and they just see, okay, time to do more. And I, I'm really hoping that is the case. Well, it's it's always been a very, a, a very small market in the West, you know, like the closest thing. So, I mean, Gundam has some following here. Um, but in terms of like mech games, it's basically Mech Warrior, which is very different from Armor Core. It's like Armor Core, if your AC was strapped with thousand pound weights on each leg and it was just do, 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 like, you know, it's it's charging along. And I, I don't know. I don't know if it's just that that mecha culture and, you know, to an extension, even anime culture are bigger in Japan. I mean, it's certainly grown. I think I remember growing up anime was like, oh, you watch anime, you're a nerd. And now it's like. Dude, all, all the kids I know are like, oh, yeah, Dragon Ball, Naruto, oh, my hero is just the best. And so we're, we're seeing more acceptance of stuff like that. Um, and we've seen more, more Western mech stuff. You know, you had, um, was that Pacific Rim and, and you know, more, more mecha, I guess. But I don't know, maybe it's, maybe it's just the time has come. Maybe it's grown and, and we'll finally see success in the West for it. I think yes. part of it, too, is that you have to keep in mind from software doesn't always get the full picture on stuff because they've been you know almost japanese exclusively in terms of the market that they really try to to hit for a long time and it's really only recently that they've really gone really big for the western market and even then it's you know it's it's really a strong publisher push there yeah um i i think armored core in the west hasn't really been relevant since silent line because sales have just been sort of on a downward sort of scale from there. So I think just in their viewpoint and what they see and what they know, and keep in mind social media, stuff like that, where people are out there displaying their artwork, videos, their interests, that's still only a recent thing within the past 10 years. They're just, they aren't really used to that because it was sort of the same thing when it came to, um, what's, what's that other game? Metal Wolf Chaos. They were not expecting the same level of support for that. Yeah. Oh, I know it's it's funny because there was I was talking to to um, a friend of mine. And he used to be Bandai's like like lead PR guy. You guys, you guys know Jay? Um, oh, Card Jay. Yeah, yeah. But he yep, was yep. he was telling me how back in the day when uh, when Bandai was getting ready to do Dark Souls two, FromSoft basically came like, okay, you know, we'll, we'll we're going to do Dark Souls two with you, but you're going to pick up Armor Core and you're also going to publish that. And it was that. it was it was a package deal. Like Dark Souls Two was going to happen. It was you know five was coming out, and you were going to sell it, and you were going to promote it, and you were going to push this game on out. And it's like that's that's how much they you know they've loved Armored Core for so long. Even when it was like at its lowest, they were like, no no no, like you're not no you're you're gonna you take take it take take your brother to school. I said like it's, you'll have it whether you yeah. like it or not. Yeah, you're gonna eat yeah. your mech breakfast and. It's what they cut their game design teeth on is where it comes from. Like, I mean, they had Kingsfield, obviously, was their first releases, but Armor Core being this is what the 15th official, like, mainline release. Yeah. So, I mean, the game has a storied history for a reason. From obviously loves the series. Yeah. Uh, so, and I think that love shows in this product. I, I think, uh, use, it, use the word polish, and that's perfect because it did. Like, I was, I was intrigued that they did the demo on PC. Because th that's not my typical inference no. for these kind of events. No, usually, they usually can't. it's like PS4 dev build. Yeah. Like, no, this shit's yeah, running like exactly. a fucking dream on PC. Here, yeah, play it. Look PC at our look at our frames. This is 4K. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's oh, crisp God. and clean. <laughs> like no stutter, no hold up. No Which that's that's it, big for was, me because Elden Ring, it's to, dude, ridiculous. Elden Ring, I love Elden Ring, but it, it kind of ran like a fucking donkey on 4K PC at launch. It had weird fucking shader issues and, and stutters and like shit's been fixed up but seeing how smooth and given that this was like all those rigs were obviously identical but yeah. like i don't think i've ever seen a, a 4k preview of a game run that smooth before actually uh funny that you mentioned that so the tables that i think you were on and sort of on the left those were all desktops but uh on our side, it was almost all laptops, and it's still yeah. Mine was a laptop. Mine yeah. was a Razer laptop. Well. And it, it ran that smooth. Yep. 
damn. Yeah, I was on. Yeah. I was. I was on the big boy. I think I had like a, a seventy eight hundred XT or something in that rig. I was like, oh yeah, let's let's Beefy. crank crank this yeah, up. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, we had Razer gaming laptops and they they ran smooth as butter, no yep. problems. Oh my god, I just want it now. I just wish I had it now. <laughs> I, just, I just want it now. So, so Eric was we, was talking about that earlier. He was having withdrawals along with uh, Zealot. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, we went to dinner with a bunch of guys afterwards. The event was over, and I'm sitting there like, I don't have a controller in my hands. I'm not playing the game. It doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right. I'm shaking. Yeah, it's 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 gonna be a hard wait. I mean, there's, I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna stay busy. Remnant's coming out. Baldur's Gate three is coming out, and I'm like, I just need y'all to get me through a month, one month, and then it's go time. I'm honestly like, there's so much like stacked in that week that like. Like I'm excited for for the Blasphemous sequel, but honestly, I think I'm just gonna like completely ignore it and then play it when things slow down because I don't wanna I don't wanna divide my time. I'm like, no, this yeah. I've been I've been waiting too long. This this is getting a hundred percent Starfield. I'll you'll get like a stream here and there in a couple weeks. Like this this all the time, all the time. Step one is is earning enough credits to buy every fucking part in that shop. So I can, anytime I die, it's going to be like, that's, that's one thing. Cause like we were, we were so starved for demo time that I was like selling parts to reafford parts. And yep. then I would die. And I'm like, it's like, it's like, are you see assembly? And I'm like, no, AC assembly. I don't got any fucking parts to put on. Like we gotta get, <laughs> we gotta make we're this live. work. Uh, did y'all, did y'all get through the fill? I know you said you, you, so you didn't beat the final boss. No, we ran out of time because uh, I, I don't know if I told you this, but uh, Aggie, his agent, told him not to bring any recording equipment. So um, I basically Oof. spent like the first hour setting up our equipment and then also setting up his equipment. So we actually just, we were at the final boss. We just didn't have enough time to beat it. But I think, Claire, you, you did beat it, right? Yeah, I did. Same. Yeah, but we were like right there on the cusp. It's it's the big dude, big dudes beat yep. bosses. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew I knew when I was running. I had, I had a bazooka right arm, the double swipe blade in the left arm, and I was running dual verts in the back. Bro, I had I had tank with a bazooka, a grenade launcher, the plasma whistle, and then the laser cannon. <laughs> and I was just, <laughs> dude, that that fight starts. It the missiles fly out, and I just straight assault boost and just <laughs> like. It was the most unga bunga <laughs> AC. Who's ever, like, I'm just throwing as much shit as I can at him. He goes to assault boost. I'm like, counter assault or uh, uh, assault armor. He puts his up. I put mine up. So I take like, I don't know, maybe that much of my health bar and then blow through most of his. He does his little thing. I back up just bah, 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 bah. anytime I can. I'm kicking him. Like, it, it was crazy because like I died like five times, but all of my attempts were like two minutes. It was yeah. just like, we're gonna see what what is the the physical limit of damage I can put out in the shortest amount of time here. Well, that's the interesting part too, because the gameplay, because you can technically like the way I was working it with with having two different vert missiles in the back. I did the bigger, heavier ones with more ammo count and more damage. Yeah. Um, because of the way they changed it, you can now fire four weapons at once technically, which is exactly what I was yeah. doing in some cases. Yeah. Like I was laying down fire with the bazooka while I was simultaneously launching the missiles on both backs at the same time, and I gotta tell you. They're great for stagger purposes because oh, yeah. the bazooka stagger and the vertical missiles constantly coming down and hitting them and just keeping that stagger bar going. Dude, it was I, a great combination to go in and do stuff. So. I had a few attempts where I like skipped phases. Like he he went from like you know missile man into like flamethrower and then assault armor and then back to flamethrower. And I was just like, no no no, you're not getting to do this. Like, yeah, the one actually the one the one I finally beat him. He, it skipped the assault armor phase completely. It never happened. Yeah, you're just just punching out enough damage. Yeah, I did. I staggered him at the right time and put him past the HP point where he wasn't going to bother and went right to the flame thing, and then he was done. And so he just died. Yeah, the the boss fights were <sighs> hard. They were good. They yeah, they were very hard. Yeah. Um, I think one of the biggest things like some of those levels like I wouldn't want to go through them without a heal like there's the levels are long like and it definitely it feels like a proper like i don't know even even a lot of the missions like i think back to to you know because i just played verdict day right if they announced it and everyone's like what is this game i was like time for a fresh verdict day playthrough so you know did that all and so that's like the most recent case of memory and like the missions are very like 
you know, ride through here, kill some stuff, go to this place, kill some stuff. Like they don't, I don't know. It almost felt like a checklist. Whereas these feel like, you know, progress into the it's zone, like accomplish some missions. things. Yeah, By yeah. Comparison. It's, yeah, like living missions. Yep. Yeah, it's it's. <sighs> Cal, I had a quick question for you. Uh, did you struggle with the controls at all? Just because it was a fair bit different. I think one of the troubles I had was uh, I have custom mapped like L2 for jumping in five and verdict day. And that was messing me a, a lot, uh, messing me up a lot in the games because I'm so used to hitting that now that every time, you know, that trigger is now laser blade. So I've inadvertently put myself in a terrible position because I'm trying to move, but oops, I belated instead. Yeah. I didn't have, I wouldn't say difficulty, but one thing that was throwing me off is I'm so used to hitting circle as my dodge and here x is your dodge and it, it was it was weird because i was fighting muscle memory but x felt natural for the dodge mm -hmm. um because you know you have, you have your a that's boosting and so then like your thumb is naturally like this so whereas going like that's going to be awkward um so that threw me off a little bit but like once i adjusted i was like you know this this feels natural so i'm fine with it the one thing that was getting me was uh when when your boost would just turn off like it's it, it's uh, it's like a fucking it's like an electric car where it's like okay it's running and i open my door and it's like we shut the car off for you i'm like no 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 stay running keep the ac going what are you doing and it's weird too because it's because the b button's for boost so you turn your yeah. boost on like normal boost but you technically can't turn it off you you have to yeah. like stay still to turn off your boosters yeah it's weird or like yeah because like i would salt boost or like assault boost where like you you know once you're in that mode the only way to turn it off is to press down on the stick yeah, or run up yeah, out of pull energy. back yeah. yeah it was it was weird because there would be times where uh, on boss fights in particular i'd be you know uh just dash boosting around like trying to avoid stuff and then i'd land and my boost would cut off and i'm like Fuck, come on, what are you doing and i'm like i don't know what was happening i don't know why i think it's just like oh you, you know you were out of boost and you landed so we we killed your boost but that's something i'm gonna have to like you know, it was one of those things that was like limited amount of time. I'm not going to mess yeah. with this right now. I just I want to I want to inch out as much information as I can while I'm here. Yeah, but that's that's going to be something. First. But then I ended up going back to custom controls like six different times to keep modifying things. So I got something I liked. And by the end, by, by the sixth attempt, I found a control scheme I ended up liking. I also had to find because I'm, I'm, I'm inverted controls for aiming. That's what I'm used to almost like piloting. And so I had to go to the camera controls and change it there. But yeah, no, once after like the fifth or sixth time, I finally got the controls where I like them. I mean, my and thing is I like, got used to playing it that way. so I always play with like one of the elites where you have like the little, the back button and every game I play that becomes dodge. So like, as like, you know, my, my game plan is I'm just going to bind X to that. Plus that way I got both thumbs on the sticks as I'm dodging around and shooting. And that's assuming I don't end up playing keyboard and mouse, but I don't know, man. It's like something, I don't know. Just like I don't know, controllers bind, feel comfy. Firing, bind the firing of all four all four weapons to one button. There it's you go. Click. Burr, burr. Yeah. <laughs> just, just mount everything. How did you feel about the uh, the charge shot mechanic? That was I was liking that. Mm. So that linear linear rifles have been around for a while. Well, no, not just that, but like so so like your your like a burst rifle burst rifle had charge. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah. was linear that was rifle really had weird. charge. Yeah, it was a lot of weapons had. So to so for people listening, a lot of weapons now have a thing where it just has a charge shot. And the idea is instead of like tapping the fire, if you hold the trigger for like a half a second or a second and a half or whatever, it would do a more potent shot that would cause more stagger damage buildup. Well, the big plasma cannon, you know, would be like straight up command man. Yeah. Yeah. But, like then, but then they also they also did it for because it's that's typically an energy weapon mechanic. You yeah. Know, the rail guns aside, but like it was weird to see it applied to the rifles yeah kinetic rifles, rifles having a charge yeah yeah yep. just like just and this is again just your normal rifle that you use in the game um so nothing like a linear gun or anything like that and yep. you have to charge it to get all three shots and you know funny enough when it comes to from software i tend to give a lot of crap because of uh their tendency to overbalance or underbalance stuff and i almost feel like that's an overbalancing for how strong triple fire weapons were in Five no. Verdict, and in, in Verdict Day in particular with the H22. 
Yeah, I was using, I mean, the, the, the burst rifle here, that ended up being my, my go-to for a while. Just because if you, especially on, um, I'd say the hardest, the hardest fight for me was probably the tank. Just because you had such a, a small window yeah. to hit that stagger spot. And so once I got the timing down, like, I would jump. And then as it was going under me, like, before I even started to turn, I would release the trigger. And he would be like, boo, boo, boo. And it always lined up perfect. But, like, I mean, that's, that's significant. To put this into perspective, let me use, yeah. like... I think this is empty. Well, if this soda devil. can is like is like the tank, and this thing's my AC, like the tank's going under me right now is when I had to unleash the or release the button, and then so I unleash the button, and it turns around and it's gonna shoot by this point. So like that's that's how long it took for me to like go out and prime and fire that charged shot, which is crazy. I mean, well, that's also one of the advantages of like tank and tetrapod is you know you don't have that yes. that prime stance, but like that's that's some that's some serious timing. Like I got to get this yeah. just right. I'm doing this like a full second and a half in advance to make sure it, it hits that sweet spot as the tank's passing. Or you know, just use vertical missiles. <laughs> Dude, when when that thing would, if, the few times I went, so I mean, this is going to be in the other footage, but basically, there's this there's this tank. And its weak spot is like an engine in its back. Um, and so the only way for you to really get solid damage in, because the whole fucking thing is, is defended, is either vertical attacks or damaging this engine to stagger it and then hitting it really hard. And God, that fight was just frustrating at times. I was like, fuck, stand still. Let me shoot. Piece of like the times where it would stagger and then I would be like, rush in. And instead I would like hit the treads. I'm like, no. <laughs> my opportunity for damage why yeah mm. that's gonna be one yeah. i'm gonna i'm gonna go back and like just revenge murder it with like a a, a pile bunker like you little <laughs> bitch how's that feel well i, mean, I made like, the mistake the first time like you know because the only one enemies had the shields you could like charge the energy shots and it would remove the shield yeah from them so i was like oh hey i'll get the big energy cannon from this guy it should be the same thing right Nope. I remember the first time I did a full charge shot and I just released it, just saw zero damage. I'm like, oh crap, this I made a mistake. <laughs> for for a second I thought maybe I had to like, you know, lure him into his own minds or something, but it seemed like the only real I mean, unless I missed something, it seemed like the only mechanic there was hit that sweet spot and stagger it. Splash but, damage too. Yeah, that was Vertical that missiles was helped one. a lot on my fight, and like you said, yeah, it's the sweet spot. Literally the sweet spot. I guess yeah. kept jumping over him and like and then quick turning and shooting with yeah, the that's that's exactly what I started again. doing. Is I just I yep. get over it and then just kind of sit there and hover over it like a mosquito while it's spinning all over the place. What would you say? Um, I know we're we're coming up. I was like, we got fifty. We're coming up on like an hour and a half. Um, <laughs> so out of out of everything we played, what would you say was your f most memorable part? Like your favorite moment in game, whether it was building or a mission or what what stood out to you the most? It's it's so hard because there's just so many pieces of the game where it's incredibly memorable, even yeah. for just a little bit that we had a chance to play. But I would have to say maybe the final boss for that level. I think just because it sort of encapsulates what From was really trying to achieve with Armored Core 6, where you have to go through, you know, fight a boss, which is quite a bit more difficult than the other ones, and especially the style of it, and, you know, being able to basically get through that. Spectacle of a boss, for sure. Yep. yep. Um, highlight for the game and the, just the event in general, uh, so I was at I was at the final boss, you know, doing you know your multiple attempts. It took a couple of tries to do it, you know. Um, when I was doing it, I had the added pressure. I had like four of the from a couple of the from guys and like four of the Bandai guys were like all they're just they're just all sitting around, around you watching, like this, yeah. like all like watch me play, right? Well, one made a comment to me. It's like, hey, you know, because I I am Chang knows this pretty well. I, I am classically my favorite style. I'm usually a heavy of some kind and big blowy up weapons, like some big damage thing. Yeah. Um, but most commonly, it's probably heavy bipeds. 
And so I was using a heavy biped, heavy core, heavy arms, heavy head with the bazooka, the blade, and the dual verts. And, this, and the guy's like, hey, you know, maybe you should change some things up or like maybe go a little faster or different boost. I said, it's like, this is the way I want to play this game. I will figure out a way to make it work. Basically, tell and literally, the, no. and literally, literally <laughs> the very next attempt is when I killed him. And, they're, and they all just start cheering and clapping. It's like, it's like, see, I didn't have to change it. This is the way I want to play this game. This is the way I want to play this AC. And, and, it, and I made it work because this is my style of playing. So if it gives anyone hope, yes, multiple styles of play are very valid. Even the ones that seem very slow and not as agile, but it, it worked just fine. Did they hit you with the Sugoi? <laughs> yep, I heard a Sugoi. I did. <laughs> I heard it behind me. Oh, man. I'm, I'm kind of... What's there, yours? I'm kind of there with Chang. There's there's a lot that's it's it's almost hard to pick one, but I think I think it might be the the pile bunker because it was like right as we were wrapping up, <laughs> and I was like I was like you know what I wanna I wanna because I just remember how how brutal it looked in the trailer, and I was like I want to I want to see this I want to to you know here actually actually I got I got a I got a picture but I saved I'm gonna put it in the the group chat. But I was like, I want to, to, you know, I want to test this. I want to see how strong this thing is. And I was like trying to get like just, just the perfect, uh, perfect hit. And then I, uh, downloads. Where's this at? Oh God. Grab it right. Um, so I kept trying and it took like multiple attempts to, to try and get this hit off. But when I finally got it, it was just like all the health. Like all the health at the same time, just like that's here. I just I just drop that into chat, but like here we go. Like just all of it. Oh, the red bar. Oh, yeah. oh. damn. Yeah, and it was that's just, a lot of health. I know. It's like it's it's over half that of the thing's crazy. health. Crazy. And like, it's like that that that's a solid sixty five percent. I I was like trying wow. and trying and trying and trying because like I like get the stagger, but like the window wasn't long enough for me to like get the charge up. And then finally, I like stayed on it and just like babied it, just peppered and peppered and peppered. And then as soon as it dropped, I was like, "Here we go!" And that seeing its health just like delete, I was like, "Damn, yeah, this this is this felt really good. good, right? Yeah, this felt really good." Imagine you have a second one. <laughs> well those those so they're not they're not like um they're not single use now how they were in uh yeah. like yeah. it's just it's a recharge now it's more like a piston mm -hmm. than uh like the 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 heat pile drivers from yeah from verdict day so yeah. yeah it's like it's like the blades themselves it's just it just it's a continual reuse over time yeah which is really nice i think because i don't that always sucked when it's like i remember that was a a, a big thing and uh it was annoying but you ever you ever run into one of those uh like airdrop pile driver people back in Verdict Day, where they would just like fall and then hit you midway, and they're like, "Oh, that's yep. uh, fifty thousand AC done," and you're like, "Fuck you!" Like, who please go away? Well, it's, it's well, I, my favorites like in in that vein where the tank tread people were like, they would literally use tank treads, have no weapons equipped they can help it, drop everything, and all they would just do is overboost around trying to hit you with the tank legs. It's just all they just try and kick you over time. and over. Yep, try to try to kick you over and over again. I'm like, Ugh. I think one of my my favorites back in Verdict Day when we would do like clam wars. I had a uh, reverse legged heavy that was like double quad barrel shotguns, mm. and so it would just like bounce, 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 boom, bounce, bounce, just jumping all over the place, like literally like a bee, just fly in, blast somebody, and then bounce off away. Like what the what even just happened? And I'm like, you get beat too fast. Just to be, I had it like I had like a, a, a yellow and black, like an actual like bumblebee pattern on it, just to be edgy. Uh, <laughs> Salt in the wound. Yeah, man. Oh man, y'all, this has been fun. Um, for everyone watching, we're gonna have uh, links to the various socials for both Chang and Clear down below, and we're also gonna have the AC Legacy Twitter linked. It is a endless endless stream of everything related to armor core so if you want to to dive into something like you can literally just scroll their twitter feed and it's it's borderline it's like an rss feed of just everything armor core related so it's all manual too yeah, it's, it's not automated lot, it's, yeah, it's, a lot, it's a lot of work i was like i was looking it's through it earlier. yeah, yeah. so y'all this has been a lot of fun thank you so much for uh for doing this this was 
when we, when we did the interview together, I was like, all right, I gotta, I gotta pull, pull, pull them in and and get it all on the record. Yeah, yeah thanks I for having us. You doing this, cowboy. Thanks for having mm -hmm. us. Yeah, the more exposure we can give this game, the better. I, I want it to be oh, yeah. a boring success, and I don't see any reason why, based on what we played, why it shouldn't be. The the yep. game is phenomenal. Just gonna be going around door to door. Hi, sir. Have you heard about Armor Core? <laughs> <laughs> hand, hand out hand out pamphlets throughout my neighborhood so all right well let's wrap this one up thanks everyone for coming on by and watching end of august armor core 6 is coming so hopefully you all check it out and uh yeah we'll see you then thank you